Hey guys, and welcome to version 2 of episode 13. What? Uh, oh, <laughs> come on! <laughs> oh my god. Where did 13 come from? <laughs> I haven't had it Can we include that as a segment at the end of the, of the podcast? Do you know what? Let's just go. Just don't stop. Have you kept you still recording? I'm still recording. All right, there we go. Oh. Hey guys, and welcome to version two of episode eleven of the Three Man Meta Podcast. Sorry, we've had to re-record this episode because we noticed the FAQ had dropped literally as we finished recording the last episode. And as we having a good old moan about the game, kind of made sense to uh, do a new episode. And as you can tell, this episode's production quality is going to be top notch. So in this episode, we'll be talking about the new FAQ and how we think it will affect the meta. Um, there was a couple of events that we went to, so we'll kind of gloss over them because as the cards have changed, I guess you're not really that interested in what happened. <laughs> and lastly, uh, we're going to be part of a content creator event that Danny will tell you all about. So I'm Leighton, and as ever, I've got Danny and James with me. How are you boys doing? I'm doing great. I won a tournament recently, and it doesn't even matter anymore because the FAQs come in and the deck is dead. The game is dead. I'm done. So it's all doom and gloom <laughs> for you stole, James. You stole my thunder. I was going to just cut you in and be like, your win doesn't matter anymore. You're worthless. Oh, I knew. I sensed it come in. I sensed it come in. And before well, you said, guys get in, I, my I nationals win still counts. Yeah, no, your national <laughs> win means absolutely nothing. You were officially playing a broken character in a broken game. Same with everyone else who won a national. I'm pointing to you as well. We use that deck. <laughs> you have no skill. <laughs> oh, spicy. <laughs> <laughs> cool right then so let's just jump straight into this faq it's been long coming um i'm so glad it's came our local scene has kind of dropped off a little bit we had a meet up the other week and there was just us three as usual and there was, a, and there was some new blood but they're um they're the usual guys that they're are kind of been drifting off a bit because Danny always plays FN and they hate him for it. So <laughs> I'm finally glad that this, this has occurred. And I'm not even going to let you try to defend yourself. <laughs> um, so hopefully this will mean same for you guys in your local metas. Now that this, is, this has come, tell those people who used to come that aren't coming anymore, please come back. The game has changed for the better. Um, some of the stuff that was a bit OP has now been reined in a little bit. So we're going to go yeah. through the, the, the choice cuts and just kind of, yeah, give our opinion of it. So I've got the FAQ loaded up in front of me. And as I'm talking and rambling on, I'm going through and trying to find the little bits in red. <laughs> so I think the, like, the bulk of it starts with uh, Balance of the Force on, what, page 23? There yeah, are a few exactly. bits above that. And I think the only real key gameplay change is that you can only override a weapon once per round now. And you can now discard a card uh, without having to re-roll any die, you can now re-roll zero die, which is cool. So very so yeah. So cool. if if uh, if class wants to head to page twenty three of the document that we have uh, <laughs> linked in the description, so we have the balance of the four. So this is a uh, points costing increase to four characters. So we'll go from the first one, which is Captain Phasma from the two player set. It has now been increased to ten fourteen from the nine thirteen. So like. Danny, I think you've said before about what Lucas has actually said about Captain Phasma, about why yeah. she was costed. It was on the chance cube of his last interview just before he left for Magic um, that he said that Phasma was pointed at uh, at 10.14, uh, but they needed... No, no, no. Or it might oh, even yeah. have been 9.14 at that point. Um, but they needed to reduce her points cost to make her meet 30 points with Kylo Ren in that two-player star box. Which they've obviously realised having a thirteen point cost uh, villain character is is very good. It pairs very well with a lot of people. So, so all hail the charismatic Jeremy who has come in, yeah, <laughs> and decided to yeah to rein rein her in. So unfortunately, shiny and whiny, the deck that I've been piling since nationals is dead. Yay! Woo! <laughs> no, I'm gonna miss it. Like I was really looking forward to playing that deck after FN got nerfed. Um, but I'm glad um, that 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 Phasma has had a point re increase back to where she was designed at. Um, yeah. And it also just uh, at the top of the FAQ, like uh, like the actual web page when it said lead designer Jeremy, it gave me that warm fuzzy feeling. Um, and after reading this FAQ, is the game's in such good hands. I'm 
I'm really happy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's crazy to think like how outrageous she was at nine thirteen, and still at ten fourteen, it's still I think a fair points costing for a character who has three damage sides and ten health. She's still really good. Still, a, still a good character, definitely. So, what do you think about this? Uh, this points you never really played with um shiny, have you, um James? No, I've, I've never really played with. Her. I played against her quite a lot uh, between Danny and my friend Joe from uni, and yeah, like when Danny told me the little factoid from the chance cube that she was redesigned, well, not redesigned at all, just shoved points cost shoved down a bit just to fit her in a box. I just got very angry. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you design a game, Lucas. Um, at all. Like, so, I mean, she's still really good and I'm sure she'll still play, see like tons of competitive play. Uh, it's just, yeah. Why? It just seems a bit silly that they, Instead of, like, if they could just change the bit of text on a card that was their points, couldn't they have changed, like, a die side or something? Or was it too late for that? I don't know. Um, I think the die side would have been a bit too much, but the points cost... I think she's all right at 10-14. Still, obviously, I think she's above par at 10-14, but mm -hmm. it's good that she got the points cost. And also, um, I think you know, she definitely will see play. Django, Captain Phasma, who may yeah. be an interesting deck. I was going to say, she's still better than General Veers. Um, yeah. So... Oh, how many points is um, Boba Fett when he comes out? Is he 16 He's elite? 16 elite as well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Boba Fett, Captain Phasma. There you go, because they've both got a special side on them and they've both got oh, guns. You can all in again. All in. All, all in. in. Yeah. So, oh. the melee sides. Oh. Leighton's happy. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So especially as Boba's my boy. So uh, yeah, yeah, this is cool. Um, I think, yeah, I think Django um, Phasma might be quite interesting. It might, might be similar to the old the days of the Django Veers, just with one extra health <laughs> and uh, um, and without the plus two modifier and said you've got the, the, the special damage. So it's still going to be a pretty fast deck. I think I think we'll definitely see that. I actually did make that deck. There's, um, I've got like a, a, a kid I support and uh, I sometimes bring in my Destiny cards and I played, I, I gave Django Phasma uh, go because um and that was it seemed to work pretty well so yeah i'm excited for that yeah. so that's the only uh plus one uh, next we have the plus twos and the first one is fn two one nine nine nines aka the cancer of destiny <laughs> <laughs> is now twelve fifteen up from his ten thirteen so will we see is this the end of fn two one nine nine let's not actually let's not talk about the the strategic rules change yet but do we think at that increased points cost, will that... Or do we have to maybe talk about the rules <laughs> change as well? Because well, that rule was basically focused at him. Not, not just him. I, yes, the answer is yes. You're still going to see FN2199. Uh, if only at one dice, I still think at Kylo 2, single die FN, drop some weapons, add some removal. I think you've still got a great deck. Um, yeah. You know, only being able to override once per turn, it still lets you go vibro knife. Oh, I've hit the money. I'll now make that a riot baton, and I'll roll FN in with a riot baton. That that's yeah. still not bad at, at, on any level. Um, it does mean that Kylo is probably going to be the focus. Um, so I've kind of worked in probably best defense to kind of you know split that damage between your two characters. Like I, I think that he's he's still got legs, and even with some fifteen point characters, you know FN Dooku. Who knows? Ooh, spicy. Mm. Yes, yes. Some people piloted that with like uh, FN Dooku, sorry, during store champ season quite well. Surprisingly, it was nowhere near obviously as big as the three character suite. But I think we'll still see a lot of him, like Danny says. And again, you just drop those fifteen weapons down to twelve, maybe eleven. Throw some more removal in, and yeah, he's still a good character. He's still still a great character. Because essentially, you don't play FN2199 for his die. You play him for his ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So dropping him down to one die is not the big detrimental thing, but it is the rules change. There is now the rules change that yes. states that you can only replace um, one upgrade per round. So the, the, the unlimited daisy chain now ends. That You can only just replace once. But, you know, in a deck that can... That's, uh, once you get an upgrade on there, it's still, yeah. it's still un... Uh, mitigatable damage. Yeah, so when the gonna... right control baton comes in for a free for one, and you and it just hits you, or a rocket launcher, yeah, no, there's yeah. nothing you can do about it. It's still good. Yeah, no, it's um really interesting. And we're kind of talking about before we start the recording that it, in the reference it says as well, if you have uh, three upgrades on a character already, you can then pay the full cost of another upgrade to then put it into play on that character. 
So in some dreamland where FN's rolling in money and you can just keep slamming, you know, three resources at weapons, you know, you, you can still live the FN dream. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah. would need just... a lot of money. Yeah, well, the thing is, I guess you would probably put in... Did you have Imperial HQ in that deck before, Danny? Yes. Yeah, so you get your Imperial HQ and then that allows you to play your full three for your three drop weapon. Yeah. your right control or your rocket launcher and then yeah just resolve it you don't have to worry about not having any money and you can resolve it and just stick those electro staffs on kylo so he gets his two for one for free yeah yeah i still think it's a deck i just think that the whole the unfairness where you have so many weapons coming at you and so much dice that you can't yeah. interact with has been toned down um i i, I like it because i we were basically what we were talking about on the on the old version of this podcast which has been deleted is that we are expecting that he would become a power action instead and essentially this rules change to the game is kind of almost is kind of kind of made him into a power action but one that you can work around like you say by um, mm. replacing one upgrade and then hard casting another one to get two activations of his ability per round which is still very strong for a 12.11 health character yeah definitely cool so now we'll move up to uh, the first and only hero um, guy who got a, um, a nerf, which is the original Poe Dameron, who has now gone up from his original 14.18 to 16.20, so plus two points. So a lot of people are thinking that Maz was the problem there, but they've gone after Poe, and the Poe-Maz deck really had kind of fallen off the face of the earth recently, hadn't it? Like, I mean, there was some people playing at Nationals, but mm -hmm. not, as been, not as been as prevalent as it once was. No, and I think this is more of a, a a catch the meta before it just goes to to po Mads because I think as soon as FN got nerfed, people were looking at oh well you know I'm just gonna play shiny and whiny or I'm just gonna play po Mads or I'm gonna play like Thrawn Car, um, which we'll get onto in a minute. But I feel like this whole FAQ just kind of just hit all the top meta decks, which were really oppressive, and is really gonna open the game up. Um, so I, I, I'm happy to see Poe um, 1620. It still keeps his special, like, really special, right? Like, he's got such a powerful ability, and it and it doesn't nerf him as a character. It just limits the options that you can pair with him. You can still roll one dice Maz, still pit uh, Maz's goggle on Maz, and that still gives you the same kind of effect as having two dice Maz. does kill the, the Poe Ray deck, though. That's now gone. Because she's obviously twelve elite. I mean, you can still play her one die, but her die's so terrible. I don't think you'd want to do that. <laughs> no, yeah, and you know, it, now it gives them the kind of the space that okay, you just gotta find a partner, and you maybe you're not gonna be able to cheat out like thermal detonators and U wings like you once was, but it's gonna that's that alone. The removal of Pomaz is gonna open up the the game to, to we're gonna see four character decks again, and we're gonna see a lot more three character decks as well. Cool. And what about your any yeah. opinions you've got of him, James? I was, yeah, to reiterate, I think it's like almost like they've decided this is like a hard reset of the meta in a way, and it's it's a really healthy place for the game to be because everyone's sort of running around like headless chickens, like trying to figure out the next meta deck. If you like, there's no people are just like falling back on these other decks. Like we see, they've all been hit, like Thrawn Car and this one, and you know all the all of the big decks have been hit essentially. Like. Hmm. It's it's basically just going to reset everything and make everyone start thinking creatively again, which I think is great for the matter. Cool. And the last one to get hit is Unkar Plat. He's gone up now from his original ten thirteen to twelve fifteen, also two points. Which uh, I think a lot of people were surprised that Unkar has had a points um, increase. Um, what, what do you guys think? It's a was that was that a, a one that you didn't expect to see? It's, it's. I think it's like you go after a Thrawn uh, Unkar, sorry, first in the Thrawn Unkar matchup because his ability is just so strong. And with his big high die sides, his his ability is really easy to get off. So when you start with one less die, it's a lot harder to get that ability off, isn't it? Really, and net crazy amounts of resources with him. It's a bit of a shame that they didn't nerf buyout, but I mean, I'm sure you'd like to talk about that more later <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not that prevalent at the moment, really, by out, but it is a card that I think does need to be reining in, but maybe they've decided that instead of reining in that card, maybe rein in the machine that produces so much resources because now yeah. you can no longer go with an elite Uncar Plot, elite Thrawn, with the, both of their, with Uncar Plot's plus two resource and Thrawn's natural black side two resource. It may be harder for them to get money, but st Chance Cube is still a card, 
And, you know, only having one dice with a plus two is not all that bad. You can still get six a turn if you roll with, with the dream with yeah. two twos on, on Thrawn and uh, a plus two. But does this mean that the, um, the return of the original Hungry Hungry Hippos, are we going to see, is Jabba going to come back now? Well, Jabba is cheaper, right? He's 14 points. I, th- I still think it's a pairing issue. I think if uh, Thrawn was 16 points, people would just jump to Jabba Thrawn, but he's not. So it's going to be tough to find. I've been I've been looking at all the characters and just trying to find like a pairing for Thrawn now. And like, so how Jabba's does he 14 win? Points, Ali. Or like, so I was just just as breaking you there, Danny. Uh, Jabba's 14 elite, not 16 elite. That's, that's so, even better. Jeez. Yeah. I, I didn't mean to say 14 as well. <laughs> in my mind but my mouth said 16 um but yeah like i've been looking at like partners for thrawn now and it's and it's tough like he, he him and himself can't win a game he's got a really nice ability which lets you look at your opponent's hands so you know what they're capable of and then removing one of them if you have a good idea what they're probably going to have but that doesn't you know one card a turn and then nothing to really follow that up other than some focus and money it's, it's not it's not impactful enough it's not like it's vader where you're like a random card and now i'm hitting you for six damage yeah so yeah. i don't the think we'll see points cost is a bit too high yeah yeah i don't think we'll see any thrawn uh probably until uh, legacies comes out but that does probably mean the price of him is going to drop so if you haven't got your elite thrawn already i would pick him up in the price drop because he's going to be good we just need to yeah. get that correct pairing for him again Interesting enough, they're now prepared to increase the points of characters, but no Finn points reduction. Or Luminara. What is this I was. Or, or wasn't it? She. Yeah. But she's. Mm, she's in the film for like two minutes. Finn yeah. is a main character yes. <laughs> in the she's new. Got, she's got a lot of Clone Wars action, though. She is a fan favourite for some people. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, but still, like, if they're prepared to increase the points cost of characters, you would expect why them to be prepared to reduce points. Why not do it the opposite way as well? Finn should be eleven fourteen. Yeah, one hundred percent. Or even yeah, maybe even cheaper than that. But like that was my biggest disappointment with the balance of the force section is that it is just nerfs and there aren't any buffs. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of hero characters could really do with some points tweaking. Tweaking, but maybe that's what they didn't want to do. Maybe they didn't want to just run in and say all the hero, all these like ten heroes are now one or two points cheaper. Go nuts. Um, yeah. Yeah, it'd be a bit of an and and you know of... maybe when legacies drops they go okay now some heroes get a buff or now some villains get a buff and you know ho- hopefully we do see it the other way around. I just had this random crazy madman thought just now, oh. which I'm surprised I haven't come up with. <laughs> oh god! So obviously with with plots coming out, they fill in the gaps of the points, you know. So if you've got yeah. a couple of spare points, you can stick a plot in. And um, what X Wing did to kind of fix some stuff that was overcosted is they with with titles or an upgrade that they they gave a point reduction there so it could be quite interesting you could have like a zero cost plot that says you get 31 or 32 points for your hero Mm. character combination that way they don't actually have to uh decrease the cost of a character Mm. or any printed cards nothing has because obviously with these four cards being changed well there is more cards being changed but these but these four characters being changed a new person comes to the game, they buy the two-player set, they see their Phasma at 9.13, they then make a deck, go to an event, and then get told, sorry, pal, you can't play that deck because this guy's had a change, yeah. so therefore you can't enter because you've not brought anything else with you. Um, and that's that's a, you know, a risk, and that is something that I have seen happen at X-Wing events where people have turned up with wanting to expected to play their cards with how they're printed on the version they bought from retail, but haven't managed to get the edited version from newer sets or whatnot. And it's been, and it's a very negative experience to, for them. So I guess with this, that could be a way to you know, mitigate that, that you, you know, these cards don't have to, we don't have to see, I would imagine with these cards of a point um, increase, we will probably have to see an alt art or a reprint that will be in either a tournament kit participation prize or every four, they might do a promotion with a, with a retailer when a person buys three booster packs they get to get one of these cards you know a free reprint yeah. of one of these cards um so i know in card by vanguard they used to do like promos and stuff and if you bought x you got x yeah. if you bought x you got y so with a plot change then maybe you could have it so yeah heroes get 32 points so therefore 
but then I guess maybe I have to say if you're playing these heroes, if you're playing these heroes, you get 32 points. That way you haven't got to affect those point costs, but you yeah. still get to play them. But then at the same time, you don't get the benefit of having one of the plots if you're a under point. So deck. it's a balance yeah. thing. Yeah, okay. That's that's an interesting idea. Um, and I could only, in, in the article for it, it did say about the bring uh, the balance of the force section is that in the future, at any point, they can remove these these conditions that they've put on the characters so you know in four sets time if they look at phasma and go you know what she's she's now a 13 point character again they, they can just remove her from this section and she goes back to she'll her, never be a 13 she'll never be a 13 <laughs> she's too no. good for 13 points <laughs> no cool. but, all right so. um one last thing i wanted to say about this as well though was that with there were there were only four 13 point elite villain characters and it was Captain Phasma, Uncar Plot, FN, and Kylo. Like a starter set Kylo. So now that they've nerfed four of those to either be cost 14 or 15 points, um, the only 13 point character you got left is Elite, Kylo. So you can't play the new Kylo with old Kylo. So we'll probably see a huge drop in uh, two player Kylo as well. Which means mono decks uh, get to see the light of day again for at least until Legacies comes out. And we get well, new you say, emo kids. Well, I guess you say that, but traditionally we've seen two character setups in villain being four dice, where two character setups in heroes being three dice. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are exceptions to the rule, but now I think that kind of brings villain more in line with hero. I think you will still see Kylo, but you'll just see him in a three character lineup because I, I've been playing and I've played against you a fair bit, um, elite new Kylo single die Grievous. Yeah. And I mean that, and that, and at the time that was working really well. But I was running cards like Imperial Inspection and um, yeah. and Vibra Knife, and they're two cards that have been changed. So I'll have to see if whether that is still still yeah. a deck. The, the only oh, other so James, you guys... oh, sorry. Go the only other real pairing I can see for him at the moment would be Gamorrean Guard because it gives you access to Villain Yellow, which is probably the best color in the game. Yeah. So James, you got any um, anything you want to add to the discussion? No, oh, you've all covered it. Sorry, we always do this. We we just have to say so much. <laughs> fine. I'm yeah. Here to make you guys feel bad. It's what fine. we'll do is we'll move we'll move on to the That's errata section, and we've got a couple of cards which you've been playing with that have been changed. So why don't you lead this yes, off? So in the errata section, and we've got it's a trap and heat of battle have both been errated. So, yeah. James, tell us how you feel about that. Oh, so sad. Just so sad. Um, yeah, Red Hero, I said this earlier before the cast began, Red Hero is dead to me until until Legacies hits and then potentially even longer uh, because they probably haven't designed with this in mind. Maybe they have, I don't know. But It's a, uh, it's a Trap was obviously the linchpin of so many Red Hero decks. In fact, if you're playing Red Hero aggro, you were playing It's a Trap, right? Am I wrong? Like, no, that's right. just a fact. Well, um, well, you, well, you weren't playing it in because you have been playing Elite Two Player Poe, Single Dice of Bean, and you weren't oh, no, playing It's yeah, a Trap, were yeah. you? No, I'm, I'm talking about my mono, so obviously for a long time I was running Bays. Oh, Bays, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, generally speaking, you can play, what I've been playing recently is two-player Pyre and single dice Sabine. And a lot of people do play it's a trap with, with more red weapons and base it more around Pyre, but I was just going all out ambushing yellow events and stuff. So, but the, this, yeah, so it's a trap was a brilliant, I mean, it was crazy overpowered, and we, we talked about it a bit, and it's overall is a good thing that's been nerfed, but to lose ambush... And to only be able to flip two dice instead of all the dice you want is just destroyed the red heroes right now. Like I think the reason why they've done it is so that they can print in the future they can actually print good red heroes that have, you know, like a three ranged for free, as opposed you know, at the minute there's only three range for one, I think. Yeah. So they've they've done it to increase the design space of red heroes that you know, before that happened until until this FAQ, they had to design every red hero with that in mind that they could just be really brutal with it's a trap because it was a brutal play it was it turned games around on on their heads so it makes sense it was very sad to see for me personally but it's, it makes sense what's your guys thoughts on it's a trap well well yeah because obviously I, I had a little go with layer akbar back in the, in the awakenings days and it was just hilarious wasn't it when you just you get all these dice out you just wait for one of your opponent's dice to hit a gun and then you're like right kill a character basically yeah. it's a trap said kill a character if you had like you know four five dice out so um, you have to kind of put it in line with sort of other out of nowhere damage. So cards like Four Strike is just three damage. Um, even if cards like Now You Will Die, which never sees play, <laughs> is 
on certain characters, two damage out of nowhere. Um, but it's a trap with just outrageous amounts of damage out of nowhere and it punished your opponent for their dice showing the size you wanted them to be so yeah i think it like like you said before james it's basically just become two aims oh no that's um yeah well yeah yeah it has really but for one but it's yeah that's more about uh heat of battle which i'm sure we'll get on to next but yeah it's a trap is just yeah it's just and sad especially at one point when all you had to do was just equip your character with loads of red guns and you could just hit and run it's the trap and then just kill a character so you yeah. didn't even have to have oh, your yeah. dice in the pool initially yeah. if you had the hit and run, like. And it it doesn't make sense from like a theater the mag point of view either. I don't think it's like, it's it's Agbar yeah. saying it's a trap, but it was a trap on them, right? He realized it was a trap, but that doesn't mean he gets to blow up the Death Star for free. <laughs> <laughs> like... Yeah, it wasn't him springing the trap. It was him realizing yeah. it's a trap yeah. and then reacting in a way. So it's a trap. Really should have been when your opponent shows X amount of damage, you gain that many shields or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally like, so yeah, anyway, yeah, it didn't make much sense, but I mean, it will be, you know, rest in peace. It will be, it will be missed. But yeah. the, the next one was heat of battle, uh, which is a new card from the new set and it's two cost. And you basically just let your opponent flip any sides, all of their dice to sides have shown damage. And then you do the same, uh, which is crazy good when you do hit things like hit and run, or if you've got the, running interference play out and you just stop your opponent from activating characters and then play two and then just flip all your DLs to three sides and Sabine to three sides and pose to two sides. It's brilliant. I think it's still good because you have to have the dice out there and say you roll out, like let's say you've rolled out your elite Poe, it's two dice, and then you roll out your Sabine and your DL, that's four dice. You know, the, the DL44 has got three gun sides, Poe's got two gun sides and and, uh, and Sabine's got two gun sides. You know, all you really need to do is, if, if you, I'm... Um, I can't bother to count numbers, but essentially you just need 50% of your dice to show damage and this card's still good. So I think it's... No, my, my issue is that it still costs two. Um, for, for two, you can do, we have them now, which is turn four of your dice to side showing damage. You have to be controlling on the battlefield. So that kind yeah. of like... I just... And I'll... Do you like know, but two four strike resources again, four strike is one to turn one dice, but then resolve it. Yeah. Two for two dice. Has it still got ambush? Does. <laughs> does that, does no, he, no, it never had. It never had ambush. It doesn't have never ambush. Had nah, I so think garbage. It's, it's totally garbage. It's garbage now because because See, yes, you can try and get out first, and you're paying two to flip two dice, but you're paying two to flip two dice. Like at that point, I don't know. Is it like it's it's just too risky, especially if your opponent has the the turn advantage, which can happen if they claim early. In that pretty... day, you, you, you still put your DL44, I oh, know, because you, you put your DL, mm, I was just thinking, you can't do your double chains to get all your ambushes anymore, can you? So, no, no. Nope. Your dice can get molested. Well, unless you have two running interferences, and then your first, so you, act, you activate Poe, then, then when they do their stuff, they hope they don't roll any dice in, or they, even if they can, then you activate, activate Sabine, play the gun, overwrite from the <laughs> discard pile, to get an ambush, to roll on Sabine, you've got an extra action. Um, so for your first running interference, you stop them from activating a character. Then you play Heat of Battle, and your second running interference, you stop, stop them from right. playing a card. Yeah, that's what I was doing before, and it was so good. But now yeah. it's like there's so many ifs there, and you're literally just change, changing two die sides. It's, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's still the same, just you don't get to change all your dice. You just change two, which well, is yeah, fairer. I think, it, yeah. I, think I, I, I can still see I, it. I would right. rather play... It's not basically, it was bonkers before, but yeah. now it's like balanced. And that's why you don't want to play it because if when a card is a card is balanced, it doesn't see play. I don't even <laughs> think if it's balanced. Like, it's like um, like I have you now. You, you know, red just turn one of your dice to showing damage, but for two, you get to turn two of your dice straight away, but also two of your opponent's dice. So why don't you just play two? I have you now, and then not have to turn your opponent's die and not have to worry about them because mm. it's bad. That that's why you're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I see what I see what you're saying, boys. You're, saying. <laughs> you're wrong, Leighton. We're not going to let you say <laughs> that otherwise. Okay, so let's let's move on to another card, which is a massive change, oh, and that's so Imperial good. Inspection. So Imperial Inspection now says, after one of your dice rolls are disrupt, you may set this support aside to return an upgrade to your parents' hand. So basically, it's just a one a one time use. Now you you inspect them once and job done. So you still have that at any, any tempo, but you know, it's uh, it's a one-time use. So, is it dead? Yeah. 
Well, like paying See, nothing is, uh, and uh, an action to remove a two cost upgrade is still good. It's not even an action. Well, you you need to pay an action to to play the card, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, well, you play an action to play the card, and then you roll out a dice to yeah. remove an upgrade. Yeah, the thing is, like I said before, like when a, the, this card was broken as all shit, it was really strong. It was overpowered. And in card games, when you now have over three hundred cards to pick from, you put the broken ass shit cards in your deck. Yes. You know, you look at your characters. Have they got one disrupt side on them? Yes, they do. Two imperial inspections, or I include. You know, um, but now the card has been sort of like reduced in power. It's still good. It's still it's still really good to be like, oh right, that weapon now goes back to your hand, or or that 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 weapon that was showing plus three or whatever. That electro staff on your mace window showing plus three, and you've got no money, and you've got the two four for ones. Yeah, bang that to your hand. That still saves your butt for one round. It's 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 almost like um, yeah, yeah. If you think like uh. Uh, what's the what's the, the new support the guard uh you know if you one one cost support discard it to remove a die shown damage on a guard on a guard yeah i was about guard. to say it reminds me of that it's but like on a guard apart from it's free but you have to roll in this die side to remove an upgrade so it's it's a bit more restrictive but i think it's still good yeah like and if you're playing like docking bay which lets you play a support from your discard pile back into play like no no it's set deck. aside it oh, it is set aside. Discard pile. Yeah, it, goes to this. it gets removed from play. So it literally is a one-time use. Yeah. No, I, I, like you say, we've got 400 cards. Okay, they've nerfed some of the broken-ass cards. We'll find new broken-ass cards and we'll put them in our deck instead. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Like, it's still going to be good. And, I, I, you know, I think you you might still see it on, like, your, your local gaming night where you're like, ha-ha, I'm still playing Imperial Inspection. But if you go to like any national or regional, or even maybe a store championship, I don't think you would see an imperial inspection make an appearance. This change is also another big nerf to the whole on-car thing because that was one of the cards they really depend, you know, yeah. depended on to prevent the damage coming through when they were slow, slow deck. And now they've lost. Not only have they lost one of their dice on one of their characters, they've now lost one of their yeah. uh, uh, big use on one of their main tools. But that does kind of lead us into nicely the next nerf of a card, which has increased the value of shields. So now you don't need to remove their upgrades. You can now actually just play all those good shield cards to keep your guys alive instead. We um, had been talking for a while that we made uh, may have done like an episode of like cards that FFG fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> and to which Vibra Knife was the one of the, the prime ones. But now Vibra Knife is basically how it should have been originally printed. And it's how, like, every card since Vibro Knife, like Electro stuff and stuff, has been printed as, like... So it now yes. reads, uh, damage dealt by this die or by any die that modifies this die is unblockable. So that means if you roll the one on your Vibro Knife and the plus two on Ray, you've got three unblockable damage. Go you. Or if you roll that really, really good plus two side and you've got it on Vader, five unblockable damage. Seems I would have been con I would have been content with just it saying that when you resolve melee, like as long as Vibro Knife is showing damage and it's resolved with that melee, and this yeah. is a well convoluted way of doing it, it was unblockable. Yeah. And they've gone like a step further. Yeah. So as a, um, which is, I'm still, I'm, I'm, which is, I think still really good because I've been saying before, Vibro Knife made shield sides on characters blanks. Yeah. And now shield now sides. Back. Are, are things and and the game is probably gonna slow down a bit more now because yeah. less unblockable damage yeah. the most damage vibro knife can do now is six and that's if mace windu has it um and you're still having to pay the one resource to do that for the most part it's going to do one to three damage unblockable yeah which so is that's... a much more easily manageable like space mm. right now what do you think about it james yeah, I was just sorry. I realised that I muted myself. Um, do you, I, well, do I, you I, think it will still be played in decks for one? Yes, because it's not a bad upgrade, and ambush on a weapon is tasty, whichever way you slice it. It's and it also it will probably it's not going to be as like I'm going to keep this on forever because fuck your shields. It's but it's going to be like it's you know when you need it, it's almost like the the kill shot, isn't it? On Mace Window, oh you're shielding up. Here's my Vibra knife. Here's three damage for your three health character it's not ridiculous like it's not great anymore it's not as i was i said before i was a bit conflicted because in a really stupid way 
Like, I'm a bit annoyed that they're messing up these chase rares that are pretty much, you know, pseudo legendaries. You know, I'm glad they didn't touch Holdout Blaster. But the, um, you know, things like Vibro Knife are things that some people, I think myself included, spent a bit of money on chasing down. And now it's just sort of not worth half as much. But I guess that's a good thing overall. Well, it always, always to me, it always seems like it was supposed to be the Holdout Blaster of melee. So it was yes. this neutral yeah, yeah. gray. And so, like, you know, you could they could have just printed a carbon copy ambush redeploy weapon and it would have been great but they gave it a disgustingly overpowered ability now that ability has been, been had its neck wound in yeah. i think it's still good because holdout gives you the ambush and sorry then the main thing the redeploy well vibra knife just gives you this utility of of maybe going in for a kill shot and also it's it, 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 is it still the only two drop melee weapon oh no cross guard lightsaber and we've got electro staff but yeah, but, okay, with black side, with black sides, Shoto, with black right sides. ancient life. Uh, Shoto does now black sides. Oh, okay, yeah. So there's now been three. Okay, so all right. And so yeah, there has been more. So at the time, at the time yes. of its printing, it was, it was the only two drop melee weapon. The, the most recent, like Empire at War, gave us like two, uh, three really good two two drop melee weapons. And the, and then there was the two plus that gave us cross guard as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so it's still so I think yeah, it's still going to see play. It's still a good two drop weapon. Let's say ambush is nice. Yeah. Um, back to that whole chaining nerf. You're still going to get some good application with it on Ray. You know, you instead of the before, well, with Ray you didn't really read. It. Whenever I played Ray, I wasn't massive on the replacing of the upgrades. I just had a couple of burst turns of rolls and stuff. So I think it's still yeah. going to be. Yeah, I feel like if you've got a deck that's got a lot of um, like plus modified sides, you're going to play Vibro Knife. Um, but I feel like the, the, the you know if you're hoping to roll that one in six, you can attach it to a mace die to do six unblockable damage. I, I don't think. Vibro Knife is worth it in that situation, but if you've got enough plus sides that you can make use of the one damage sides of the Vibro Knife and you know get get the unblockable damage that way, then it's going to be played in the deck. The return of all not necessarily the return, but the actual playing of Lightsaber Pike <laughs> to actually use yeah. that uh, is that plus four damage for one on Lightsaber yeah. Pike. Ky I believe. Kylo's got two plus sides on. Kylo's lightsaber has two plus sides on it as well. Shoto lightsaber is plus one, plus two on it. Um, yeah. So, they, you know, there are applications. And if you are playing it with these plus modifiers or with Ray, uh, it, it's still really good on Ray, who also didn't get a fix other than. Nope, you still. Override. Yeah, you still weep in ambush on Ray. You, you still get two anyway, additional actions. So. Oh, yeah, Ray, Ray and Vibro Knife, still good. Um, if you've got the plus sides, it's still good. Yeah. I'm just I'm just looking forward to shields being a thing again and yeah. being able to play Dooku again every now and then. Yeah, it's just my boy, my boy, my boy Dooku. It's just nice that you know all that focus on hero shields. We're saying uh, in the, the previous episode that's been deleted that the new Anakin was like, why isn't it heal? Why is it shields? Now, okay, shields isn't quite good as healing, and maybe it should be healing, but but now now two shields feels relevant and uh, yeah, kind of good, right? Oh yeah, because we had a whole section, didn't we, of the original episode? We were going to talk about drafting and what our opinions of that, which we probably we might have a bit of time to talk about today. But yeah, we're essentially what we're saying is yeah that new Anakin, he's so much better in villain because two damage, two shields is not the counter to two damage yeah. to healing two is. But maybe now with Vibra Knife's change, maybe getting two shields is the counter to two damage because the shields are actually now going to block damage where before. They weren't going to. They were just going to. They blocked specials, but they weren't going to block the melee because of all the uh, vibro knives. And it always, it never really made sense to me either why a vibro knife was unblockable while a lightsaber wasn't. <laughs> but, you know, I guess, yeah, I guess yeah, there's so yeah. many more lightsabers in the world. You know, I could make yeah. every lightsaber unblockable damage. And I cool. Think so there's we'll also see, um, just just one one more thing on the vibro section. The vibro axe, which when you attack, you get to remove uh, the shields on a character. Yeah, I was thinking that. Now it's a three drop weapon. It doesn't have redeploy, but you know if shields become relevant, that's a much better option. We'll see intimidate again. You know, it's it's just going to open up the space so much more, and it's such a good change. Yeah, I always in the waking man. I always loved a spicy one copy of Intimidate. <laughs> <laughs> but like, get rid of them. Now your yeah. damage is going my, to your face. In my uh, Mace Trooper deck, I've now put in two copies of Dug In, so I've got two cautions, two Dug Ins, mm. two field medics, and uh, two will powers. It's it's a lot of health and a lot of uh, you know damage mitigation there. So it might give him the legs he needs. 
Cool. So there's been a lot. There's been a few card clarifications as well. Just um, scrolling through, see which ones are in red. So there's a card cl card cl clarification for premonitions, um, which sometimes when I read these, I've always felt this as well. When I when I play X Wing, when I read some card clarifications, I'm like, as if someone thought that card worked like that and needed that card clarification. <laughs> you still you still see it on the on on um on the Star Wars Desi Facebook every now and again. Someone's like, oh, but my my three melee for one resource shows a resource. So can I play? logistics on that to get a resource it's like oh my god shut up <laughs> so, um yeah but so there's so the premonitions um cloud creation says that there is a play restriction that prevents the card from being played discard it to the owner's discard pile so basically you can't if you try and you know premonition your opponent's premonition that has a, a restriction on it you know can't do it uh destiny now um before effects that decrease the cost of a card cannot be used in combination with destiny to play a card with a higher value so is that basically saying like you have a say you've got a, um you destiny a two you can't then use it in conjunction with pad one to get a three for free is that, that is what correct. that's saying yeah that is exactly what i'm saying or you can't reaping the crystal destiny not that you could really do that but yeah but you can still but can you still reap in the crystal pad one and um yes uh, it binds all things absolutely <laughs> <laughs> to play zero, Empire zero, War. Play nothing. So uh, this is the one that made me laugh. Ah Ahsoka Katano, you must pay for the dice from upgrades on her as well. What does it not actually say that on her anyway? Is that not like are, are people assuming? <laughs> yeah. This is what blows my mind at the morons that play this game. Oh, <laughs> very spicy. Uh, I just uh, I just don't care if you don't like me really. After you activate this character. For the first time each round, you may spend resource equal to the number of dice you just rolled to ready her. So you, how can you not understand that when you rolled in upgrades, you rolled in more than two dice? <laughs> Look, man, it's a very please, complicated game. Please use your brain. <laughs> right. Um, so Ancient Lightsaber. When this upgrade action is used, place it on the bottom of its owner's deck. So <laughs> I'm assuming the only else. way people got confused from that is if they were playing it with Grievous. And they'd stolen it, and they yeah. then wanted to do Ancient Lightsaber. That's the only... Uh, which, But then again, they had the whole thing, that card doesn't belong to you, so it goes to the person it belongs to. Yeah, I, I can see why they've clarified that, but I can't... I can't imagine understand why you'd get even... confused by it. Yeah. These are the sort of questions that I, I I've, I've told you guys, that when I worked in retail and I worked for Christmas Temps and they asked me stupid questions, I would be so condescending to them, I'd, I'd eventually make them cry. This is my feeling towards this as well. <laughs> like, it's all well and good, like, when you read a card and it can be quite confusing and you misunderstand it, but just, like, some things just to me just are so simple. Why? Why, why, why don't you understand this? Basically, I'll tell you a story. So I was at, well, at work, and this Christmas Ted got to me, he had a bit of rubbish, and they're like, um, Leighton, what should I do with this um, rubbish? So I said to them, put it in your bag, take it home, <laughs> and every day just take a bit of rubbish home, and then you're at home, you can make like a shrine of all the stuff you've got. And they looked at me like with an absolute face of confusion, and I was like, put it in the fucking bin. <laughs> One of my favourite pastimes is to, every time I see a silly comment, is just to send it to Leighton, just to make him a little bit angry. Well, the thing is, we're not, uh, what, and this, is, this is actually something I must do three to five times a day. I'll be going through the, the Destiny Facebook and I'll see a question or I'll see something and I'll start writing a reply and I'll go, no, <laughs> don't get debated, delete, <laughs> delete. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, if you see me respond to something you've written on Facebook, I don't think you're a moron. But if you don't see me respond, I think you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. Cool. So, right, then. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. on to onto more cards. Kane and Jarrus, you must declare what action you are taking before using Kane as a bully. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> uh, Mace Windu, shields do not affect remaining health. No shit, Sherlock. Yeah. Um, General Hux, this special ability counts for each character you have in play, not for your deleted characters. No, no shit, Sherlock. Shit, sh Sherlock. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it's even Grand like... Inquisitors... Go okay. on, go on. No, I was just reading the next one. Okay, when you have Grand Inquisitors lightsaber, when you resolve this special, you can re-roll it instead of removing it from your pool, even if you did not turn a character die to a blank. So that's just that whole... I'm just going to load that one up. Because is he a full stop or is he an and then? Let's have that... a look. 
Grand Inquisitor's lightsaber. Special. Turn a character die to a side showing a blank full stop. Reroll this die instead of removing it from the pool. So yes, because it's a full stop, you can either do one or the other or both. Same with uh, um, Clash. You can either turn one of yours to um, your blanks to melee, or if you haven't got any, you can turn one of your opponent's melees to blank. Yeah. Hasn't gone, and then it is a full stop. I had a guy. Running in... uh, I was playing a guy on TTS side story now, um, and he resolved uh, a jetpack special, and I was like, "Oh, you can take a shield," and he was like, "No, I can't." It's like, "Yeah, read the card. It says, you know, remove a a, a, a die showing melee, uh, gain gain a shield." And he's like, "No, you have to do both." It's like, "No, you, you really you really don't like take take a shield, please." And he just refused to take his shield. So if you're listening. You can do that. It's fine. Yeah. So we've yes, yeah, so because jetpack obviously it hasn't got the force, just and isn't it? So just remove it. the special says remove a die showing melee damage and give attached character one shield. So it's not and then it, or yeah. you doesn't, then. It doesn't yeah. say then. If it, if the card doesn't say then, then you can do either part of the text. Then is yeah, that card does two though. things. You just do as much of it as you can. Yeah. Yeah. He still beat me cool. in that game though. By the way, so trigger. <laughs> Feels bad. IDC, feels IDC could join. This one's quite. Um, I'm glad this has been clarified. Is that this ability is an inherent die ability? So, what, and then the value of the die is constantly checked and will decrease whenever another ID droid leaves the pool. So, what that is basically saying, if you've got two ID droids showing melee damage and you go, I'm resolving melee, the first one hits for two, then that goes, and then you've got one left, and that one hits for one. But Correct. I thought that, that was just, that's just, just how it worked, though, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's but, 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 but because some people think when they deal damage, they're doing it all at once. So they've got their two seeker droid die. They think they are because they've got two. Mm. They're both twos. They're both twos when they're sitting in the pool. But yeah. when one is then resolved, because you resolve them one at a time, it's then removed from the pool. So the next one reduces down. So I think I've actually seen some videos on YouTube of people playing it incorrectly. They're like, oh. like they've had like they've had an ID droid, two ID droids, and like another dice. Say they had two ID droids and a two. They then resolve melee, and their opponent took six, when they in fact should have only taken five. five. Okay. Um, so I'm glad that's been clarified. But then. That, you know what can i say so port district if you decrease the cost of an upgrade being played below three or play it for free then it does not gain ambush that's interesting so i'm just going to look what port district does again so port, these... port district is uh, any upgrade w with the cost of three uh gains the ambush keyword yeah. three or more oh each card that you play that costs three or high see yes, this is a good one because the, the, the yeah the there, right yeah, so it needs to say if it's if it said while controlling the battlefield, each card with printed cost of three, your higher let gains ambush. Yeah, then it doesn't matter if you pay. It. Yeah, or value. Uh, well, they normally use print. I know in Game of Thrones they tend to use either printed base cost, printed cost, or base cost. They tend to yeah. use to say like so. If a card is reduced, you don't you're not working out any abilities based on the amount you're paying for it. You're looking actually looking at the physical text on the card. Yeah. So I could I, I actually this one I could I could see why people would get confused with this one. So if you ever questioned this one before, uh, you do not get the moron status. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one I could definitely see why. I mean, I understood it, but I could see why people wouldn't understand it. <laughs> yeah. This this uh, running interference one though blows my mind. So after taking an action using two copies of this support on the same opponent. It will only prevent that from taking that action on their next round that turn, not the next two turns. What? So you're telling me if someone went right, has, has anyone actually done this? I activate a character, I do run interference twice. You now can't activate a character on your next two actions. Was that seriously how people were playing that? I, I don't know. No one's done it to me. I would have probably just oh, f forward my TTS if someone said that to me. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, it blows my mind. It really does. But what can I say? I'm, I'm take, national champion. I've got to be up on the rules, right? After you take an action, you may exhaust the support to choose an opponent. That opponent cannot take the same action that you just took on their next turn. Yeah? Just yeah. because you're doing two does not mean it goes over two turns. Nope. 
It's still it's, your next turn is still the next turn you have, not the next next turn you have. Yeah, yeah, cool. I yeah. think um, I really wish like well, this is what I loved about the Pokemon TCG. Like you actually had they had this thing called the Professor Program, where essentially the, they if you want to judge an event, you have to have gone through the Professor Program, and they you have to learn the rules, and they give you examples of cards and how they interact, like things that trigger at the same time, and ordering and wording. And you take this test, and then you become a professor. And the benefits you have of becoming a professor is when you when you um, do events, because obviously like if you judge an event, you're missing out from playing but you get points based on the amount of events you get and at the end of the year the pokemon company sends you stuff that only professors get based on the event so some of the guys in norwich got they got really cool play mats like organized play play mats and the only way you can get them is if you're a professor and you've done x amount of stuff and like when they do like events they like they they you get like um, a hot stamped card that will say like staff on the card or judge on the card and they are you know and, and they tend to sell for a little bit more because you know only the judges get them. I really and I, I think Magic has a similar sort of like system of maybe not the rewards and whatnot, but you have to have proper judges. I really wish FFG did a very similar system. All I have to do is be like, yeah, you just got to take the rules, read a simple test, we bring out these new cards, how do you think this interacts, and then you can then all judge an event. And you get the um, you get the the prize kit. You get the cards from the event for doing it. Yeah, I think they should do something like this. When we went to Cambridge, the judge there, I waited for him to Google the value of uh, the value of a blank, and I was like, I can tell you this. I know, I know this one. Please let me tell you. It's like, no, let me let me just have a look. The, yes, I mean what? it's cool what? that he did. It's cool that he did his job and Googled it and found it out because maybe he doesn't play the game. But like, but yeah, yes, but you know, but if you didn't, that's an example you, of why we should. Have, if you had a you judge, know. because I'm sure, like in most stores, the people play the games. I know at, at Athena, like um, Jamie's played the store owner. He's played Destiny and stuff. He's gone. He's, you know, he's always too. He's unfortunately because he's a store and he's always bloody busy, so he doesn't get to play as much as you'd want to. But you know, like he knows the rules, and even like. Um, but it's just yeah just that would just help alleviate some of this yeah. nonsense but it's fine i mean i guess i need to wind my neck in and stop being such an asshole and call people morons it's not <laughs> understand as much yeah. as that i mean the, I the just, big uh, the big thing about i, I just despair of humankind <laughs> plus one the big thing about um like judges though it's just again it's uh fancy flights organized play department are just 20 years behind i feel like they're just not they just don't seem to get it yet. And they are a new department, to be fair, like X-Wing events and stuff. Like, they're only a couple of years old, as far as I'm aware. So they, I, th- I feel I, like they just need to do better, though. If they want... I guess it's like with, like, with, like, yeah, with, like, Magic and with Pokemon and stuff, they are, they're not just on focused it, right? on releasing a game and just being like, here's a game. If you pay it, that's cool. Like, they understand that, like, it's good to support your tournaments because they're the majority of the people that play your game you feel, you always will have people who just buy a game come home play it with a friend play it with their partner play it with their kids you know like they like they would do like a board game or whatever but the majority of trading card games be it tcgs lcg ccgs they play because they want to play competitively so you should really support that because they are your main audience yeah yeah, it's and like Pokemon Imagine the and do it, and Hugh Yo do it as well. That's why they're the three biggest card games. Yeah, it's, it's like all the people who say, and you, and you said it earlier on in the podcast, that the, the guy who shows up with Kylo Phasma and gets told, "Oh, that's not the rules anymore." Like, I understand if you're a new player, that's only going to happen to you once, and if at that point you've never met another player of the game to go, "By the way, they update the rules online. You should check that out." Um, you know, were you really even tournament prepared at that point? And, you know, a lot of tournament pages go, these are the rules we're using, here's the latest FAQ, read up. So I think the argument of showing up to a tournament and having an invalid deck argument just falls apart when, you know, the onus is on you as a player to make sure that you are prepared for that event. And Yeah, but, yeah, I get that. Then you have the casual who turns up, and it's all about you know it's that that inclusivity of of also having it for the casual as well, I guess. Yeah, but then you know on 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 the Monday night, if uh, you know a new guy showed up with Kylo Phasma, and he went, "Oh, this is the only deck I've got," I'm not going to be like, "No, no, I couldn't possibly play you versus that deck. You're one point over. How how dare you? I'll just play the game." Like, I, I, I played that game enough, and, and you just tell him, right, that, oh, by the way, there's an FAQ. This character doesn't cost him this amount anymore. It's cool, though. Let's play. Like, yeah. 
And then the next time he does it, like, okay, no, come on. <laughs> That's not how much he costs. But yeah, yeah. But like, and it's just a level, right? If you're a casual player and you're going to a, a competitive tournament, then you need to, you know, at least follow the advice that that's on like every event page ever for any tournament you ever go to will be latest FAQ, latest Serata, you know, all that information is there. Which is something that Fantasy Flight do very well, right? That this FAQ is very clear in, in, in what it's trying to say and what the changes are and it's very easy to just read through and go oh these are the changes for this one so from like rules update wise yeah they do a great job it's just from a like a judging and uh yeah yeah you could say they're more on price the uh, faqs <laughs> you could say that cool so there's that that's the, that's the cards that were there um that the empire war ones so that i guess that really need to mentioning oh magna guard even this character is healed after the ability triggers is still defeated so that's the same that obviously happened with obi-wan kenobi yeah. and you can still deal damage to this character once it has eight damage on it just any excess damage just comes ignored so that's um because they defense, did say now that it, cannon fodders. yeah yeah so yeah because normally you can't deal damage to a character over its health no. can you and and it kind uh, of think... shows why some supports are saying you know if it takes three or more damage so there might be ways to like like uh, the new resistance bomber says when the support has three or more damage on it discard it so there might be you know ways like that which let you do that and the last one is coercion so coercion is a uh, i think it's a really good card but there's, there's three little bullet points here so let's go through them and understand why they decided to put them in so if a player cannot pay for the event or fulfill any play restrictions on it then they do not have to play it and can take any action as they wish so that again seems to be pretty obvious if, if i said my opponent right you've now got to play mobilize as your next action and they have two resources well they can't play mobilize can they so no. and um one thing that we've brought up in a podcast before as well that spot events as long as it says doesn't play like for instance the only obsession i mean one of the only exceptions i know of well, probably is more is force training it says to play spot a yellow character mm. so you must have it as uh, not yellow sorry blue force training yeah force yeah. train actually reads to play spot a blue but if you coerce in your opponent's hand and you see an electro shock and you've killed their yellow character you can force them to play electro shock because the spotting of the yellow character is not a play restriction it's just a restriction on the effect of the card yeah so, so you make the play one to discard a card yeah so essentially you've done what you wanted to do you've you've wasted their action and burnt one of their resources and burnt a card from their hand to prevent re-rolls the next part even if the event has no effect a player must play it and resolve as much of it as possible there you go so that second um, point is basically what the point i said so they have to do it so like yeah. the spots they have to do as much they just so if, if you make them do electroshock they just discard the card and play a resource yeah or even passing is not yellow it's character is still alive and they're only their dice is in the pool then they have to remove one of their own dice yeah correct yeah because yeah it doesn't yeah, it doesn't, it's not it doesn't matter what so. and then passing is not an action so a player can choose to pass their turn instead of taking an action the next time they would take an action around they must still play yep so that's exactly how we have played it before when i played it on the uh, knights of ren um event um i was forced to doubt my next action so i just passed and waited until there was a dice my opponent's dice in the pool that i wanted to doubt so yeah good oh, good good to know that that card is just um that is it, it plays how i read the card plays <laughs> <laughs> cool You're um, so and then games. oh well the thing is i make mistakes um nationals you can't do that <laughs> <laughs> such confidence should've yeah just, such conf should have just said no put my foot down it's too alpha for me I still beat you, <laughs> so it doesn't rule. matter. Is this Layton's fake ruling that you just agreed yeah. to blindly? Yeah, so that is, yeah, exactly that, actually. All I can say is, in the possibly almost thousand, thousands of games I've played of Star Wars Destiny, <laughs> it's possibly one of my only rule mess-ups I've had. So. Yeah. I, I <laughs> and it was, only the, it was only in the semi-final of the National Championships, yeah. but I was losing anyway, so it didn't matter. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I had a rules mess-up. Someone actually played Launch Bay against me, and rolled out and hit shields, and I let him spread the shields between his two characters because he had four shields. They so stuck one, oh. one on the other. And then afterwards, I was like, "No, you can't do that." I still won the game, so it doesn't matter. But you know, <laughs> as as much as Leighton will say that you're all a moron if you don't understand the rules, there you go. There's there's two arguably. 
We're not perfect. The, the best, the best players in the country. I mean, I am the best player in the country, but Leighton's <laughs> somewhere, the somewhere, somewhere below me. Oh, I'm um, like, I'm like the bright. I'm, you know, I'm the bright in the country. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, and then so there's a bit of red text. The last two things I want to go over is they've kind of clarified um, endurance and prize possession. Uh, that was, uh, I think, actually, someone asked Lucas that and he emailed it. And I think some douchebag said, Oh, an email from Lucas isn't official. I'm still going to gonna play how I want to play it. Get the fuck out. Sell your cards. We don't want you to play our game. <laughs> wow. Well, um, so, what does the ruling actually say? So basically, so the question as it's written says, can I play endurance if my opponent removed one of my dice for prize possession? And no. no, you cannot play endurance. The die is placed on prize possession and therefore is under your opponent's control. Yeah. yeah. It specifically yeah. says on prize possession as well. It cannot be rolled again by any character or something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that was ever needed to be FAQ. No, but again, I, don't, I don't think it did either, but it's in there. Woo! Um, another one, interesting one, uh, probably a, oh, it's a very little um, application, is uh, docking bay and outmaneuver. Like, if I dock and bay and outmaneuver, um, do I get the resource? No, because everything, ev every action after claiming is null. So, yeah. you know, even if you claimed, I don't think outmaneuver is an action, is it, to get the resource? I think it's just if you claim, get a resource. Yeah, but, it is. But you've, you've claimed, you put, so then you, you, the claim ability is put the card into play, you don't get to do the card because it wasn't in play when you claimed. Uh, I, 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 I'm trying to think, I think there was a similar thing like that happened before in um, in, in uh, Game of Thrones. But anyway, and then the last one I can see here is, which I've not even read, so let's read out loud. If I resolve the special ability on Ascension Gun to use the claim of a main plaza, can I move damage from it onto it? And yes, you can. So that's going to allow you to move damage from it or onto it. So essentially, because main plaza is that one where you can move a damage onto it from a character or move all damage from it onto a, a character. character. Yeah. So the interesting question is here, if I've ascension gun and I've moved damage from my character onto it, next turn, can I ascension gun and move a damage off of it onto another character? I guess technically yes, because yeah. it's just in the it's just in the set aside zone, isn't it? Which is yeah, still a well, zone. So. Like, like the issue is there is that when you're ascension gunning, uh, it's probably the only support uh, the only battlefield off the top of my head that has two effects on it which when you claim two things can happen so it's just clarifying that you know even in the future even if we get more battlefields that have multiple claim options on them that you can ascension gun any option on on that on that uh, yeah. card yeah so you can so if you are the only player playing ascension gun, you can essentially amass a lot of damage on it in the set aside zone to then eventually you can essentially ascension <laughs> and all off. Cool. Nice. Um, just flicking through, is any more red? We talked about the um, the change with the uh, playing upgrade. So it said you can only replace an upgrade once per round. Let's see yeah. if we missed anything else. Let's just someone play some music. We were, well, I was humming the side of the head to, side of the head track move before. Do, move do, is in red. When an upgrade moves to a new character, it maintains its state, ready or exhausted. Cool. So um, I guess somehow, I mean, what, 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 the only upgrades I could think that um, exhaust currently are Master of the Council, uh, Hunker Down, um, Makeshi Training, Personal Shield, any other ones? Uh, I'm sure there's a couple more, but they're. And the only the two ones. effects I can think to move them are the claim ability of Shadow. Hidden right. Shadow. Cool. The only way I can think that can move them at the moment are bestow. Yeah, that's only weapons. Um, and that, that's only weapons. Oh, no, and is there any weapons? Do can you bestow can titles? Can you, you can, yeah. bestow? Bestow non says non-ability upgrade. Oh, okay. So you can do. Oh, because yeah, that's a, t a title, isn't it? Because yeah. hidden shadow is an ability, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that'll be an ability. I think. And is hunker down an ability? I'm just. I don't think it is. Hunker down is an ability. Cool. So you can't that. Well, there's best so basically two, uh, and then and then the up and then the battlefield. So really, that just means that yeah, I guess if you've hunkered down and then you bestow yeah. it over, you can't then hunker down on that character. That's yeah. or hidden shadow. If you've been. Yeah. That's the only application. If I you think there might be more. Something over, it's, it's still exhausted. But the thing is, we, but the thing that's, but the thing also is though, like if I cargo hold over a hunker down, I now can't tap it anyway because I've claimed. 
Unless I, yeah. oh, 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 one other application, I could play new orders on cargo hold yeah. <laughs> to, to move it over. But now I can't do it. So there is, okay, some super niche application. Some super niche where you can gain an extra shield. Ooh, baby. Um, so redeploy has had some has had some confirmation. Um, before this upgrade would be discarded by its character being defeated, you may instead move it to one of your other characters. The up- so I mean, is that just a slight changing wording? I can't remember the original wording. I just yeah, I think the other big thing I think they pointed out on there is that you can now, regardless of play restriction, move the the weapons over as well. Oh yeah, so, so but that, that is in red. That was there before. Oh, so okay. the, the redeploy keyword ignores play restrictions when attaching to a new so, character. Yeah, it probably is just streamlining but, the rules a bit. But that, that but that also was like before because obviously we knew about um, Sith polychrons and whatnot and other cards that ignore yeah, lightsaber and 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 uh, cargo hold that doesn't um, deal with. Uh, and then there's the queue. There's a big diagram about the queue. Read that. Can't be bothered. Um, yeah. <laughs> and inherent dice abilities again, referring to. Um, secret droid. Def- so. It says secret droid launch bay lure of power. It says here, but that doesn't reduce lure of, pla- lure of power and, and the, 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 the planet community don't reduce in cost. Only launch bay and secret bay. Um, secret droid does that. Oh well. Um, what else we got here? I think Damage. It's because, like uh, diplomatic community lets you split shields between characters, so it's got its own Ooh. ability, as oh, it were. So. Oh yeah. Cool, but that, and, that's, and that is all I can really be bothered to talk about. Wow. <laughs> I think I think we've kind of like gave a nice little wrap up on it. Um, the only other thing I wanted to to point out about the uh, rules reference is that with so essentially what this means is that villain like two character elite combos are dead. You're not going to see them as much because a lot of the fifteen point uh, splits are just have too little health. I think. I um, mean, we're just going to see a massive return of like three character, four character decks. Um, so Balotic is going to be good again. Yeah, I think, and I think uh, original Phasma is going to be coming back. The Double yeah. Guardian Phasma, yeah, Danny's. Um, she's coming. She's de- she's going to be coming back, especially with like shields meaning more things now. So yeah, I think. Are you going to play air superiority in that? Um. It depends, right, on how... I've not played Flank because I really think there's going to be a lot of four-character decks um, taking hold because there's just so many good combinations now. Um, And it it really just depends where the meta lands, whether or not some of these cards actually make it in or not. If, you know, three-character ends up being the sweet spot, then I probably will put them back in. And Because the meta is just... There isn't one at the moment and everyone's just playing all sorts of stuff to work out what's good. I'm keeping my decks very general at the moment before I start putting in the the, the more tech cards. Yeah, that's a, definitely. I think it's gonna we're gonna have a an interesting period. We had the two week meta before over here, and now that we've got a whole new meta thanks to this. Uh, yeah, it's this just a shame it took around. a month already, and but what we are probably what eight weeks away? No, not even eight. Is it like maybe six weeks away from the release of Legacies? If the uh, mid December dates are correct, yeah, maybe they maybe the one reason why this FAQ took a bit of time was because they were contempl- and they didn't want to then release another one um, after yeah. that set comes out. So they're trying to make sure like any new interactions coming in new cards, you can find uh, the ruling for it based on other cards and how they've been ruled. Yeah, so anything I can. Do. Oh, and also the fact that like because it's still essentially Disney's IP. I think I think most of their um, releases have to go through them, to, so Disney have yeah, to kind of give it the green do. light to protect their uh, to protect the IP's integrity and whatnot to make sure it goes through their standards. But cool, okay. I think we can just. Uh, are you happy, James? Do you want to happy to wrap up the, the chat there? Yeah, yeah. I think. Oh, Danny wanted to mention something about a content creator tournament. Well, that's what I mean. Wrap up on this this section. We can move uh, on. To okay. Next. Right. Yeah. I'm so I'm so done. I'm so ready. <laughs> cool so yeah so uh danny do you want to uh, well mm-hmm. so we've talked so before we go into that brief i'm just want to just think of where anything else for me to go because this will be the final section so uh, basically i'll give you the cleft notes of our discussion on drafting we think it's going to be fun what we think is that um stores should have a draft um a copy of the draft set which they can loan out to new players because it's too much for uh 
say like I'm a Magic the Gathering player, I like to come play draft. I've gone down to my local store and there isn't enough people to do a draft. And there's all these guys playing this cool Star Wars game and they're going to set up a draft. I don't have 35 quid to do the draft. But if you let me borrow a draft set, either be it the stores or if you are like us, I'm probably going to buy two so you can get every character twice. Take it with you, let someone borrow it and then get more people playing your game. Is that basically the cleft notes that we had from that? Pretty much the cleft notes, yeah. Anakin is good. The other characters will only be good in drafting. You won't see them in Constructed. And yeah, and also, I don't like drafting. <laughs> yeah. uh, I prefer Constructed Also, drafting. suddenly, the uh, the five-player Jawa deck playing all nothing but grey neutral cards seems really good. Can't get Thermal U-winged anymore. Let's do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You had it here first, folks. Cool. So that's the cleft notes of that. Um, yeah, so let's move on to what Danny has to show. Yeah, so I've been in a, kind of a long email chat with a lot of other uh, Star Wars Destiny content creators, and it's people like Artificery, the Jedi Trials, Hyperloops, uh, the YouTuber New Brainer, uh, Starkiller Base, Rebel Grey, Double Blanks, and us. Um, we're putting together a uh, just just a tournament just to showcase games we're not playing to be like who is the best content creator who you know who who has the best players like we're gonna we're gonna find out a winner and it's gonna be great what we want to do is just showcase some some great games and we were toying with the idea of like oh maybe we play bad characters because everyone's sick of seeing fn um but as soon as the faq dropped we were like oh i guess we just play as much janky stuff as possible because you know, it's gonna. We, we we just need to work it out now. So we're all gonna be playing just interesting, new, quirky jank. And while we try and dominate each other, it's using the Hearthstone uh, best of five conquest format. So you you have to oh, take three favorite. decks, um, and you have to win with each one of those decks. Uh, and we'll each respectively be recording it on our sides and then uploading it to uh, our respective YouTube channels or websites or you know whatever. Um, we've got the pairings up, so the, the the first game will be the three man meta, and I'm not sure how we're going to do this. We would take one game each from each stage, or I was thinking maybe one of us plays and the other two like cast it. And so like just join the game and just like just talk about the game while the other person's concentrating. Just talk, yeah, just talk shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it depends. Um, but we're playing double blanks first, so we'll we'll see you, coach, on the battlefield that is destiny. <laughs> Um, that is whether Battlefield wins the roll off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which will be mine because national champion, right? I think only Bobby Sapphire, Mr. Loops. Oh, no, he's not national champion. He is uh, continental champion, so, isn't he? Yeah, so. oh, he won the Euro. He won their, their version, the US version of our Euros, didn't he? Yeah, so he's continental champion, which is higher than me. So I'm already being dommed. Feels bad. But I don't think we're playing him in the first set. We're not. We dodged it. We're playing Double Blanks, Rebel Grey, and the Jedi Trials. So get to see uh, old the house to the door as well. I think uh, maybe we should just do it. If it's, how many rounds are we playing? Three or four? Uh, it's kind of broken into separate stages, and the winners kind of go through and stuff, I think. Oh, okay. So if we... For so instance, it's initially three rounds... One. Oh, so if if we let's say oh, if we play against um, the double, then we play at double blanks, aren't we? If he beats us, then we're out of the comp the thing. Well, no, we'll still so. play the other two games, so it's still a oh, best oh. of five, best of three. So if we win oh, two so of our what... games, that will probably see us through. Oh, so why don't we just do one each then? So you play one, you do all, all the games. Yeah, but games. if you lose the oh, game, oh. right? How we're going to make the other that other person feel awful? So yeah, we probably should do it like that. Actually, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm in. I'm right. in. Well, there's something we can maybe talk about when we're not recording. <laughs> yeah. But just, just yeah, so you, you all of... know, like, because um, we, we generally don't put a lot of content out on our YouTube channel. We chuck the podcast up there and not much else is done. So you'll just see a little bit more, uh, a little bit more content on there. So we'll put a link as always in our, in the show notes and we'll also spam our Facebook pages and all the channels when all these videos go live. So if you're interested, cool. it's going to be there for you. So is that is that the lot, boys? Is that what we want to talk about? For it feels like we've it's, it's now taken us two and a half hours to do one episode. <laughs> yeah, it feels <laughs> feels like the uh, the Euros episode all over again. Yeah, 
Cool. All right. So I guess the last thing we'll say is thank you very much to our continuing Patreon supporters. It really means a lot of us that you would give your hard-earned cash to help us um, host this show uh, because the internet doesn't allow people to do things for free anymore. God damn it. So thank you very much. Um, we are. We've held, we had the results from our poll, didn't we? Oh, so, we did. Uh, I, got, I can't remember um, who, who, who won the poll. Can you, can you remember that? Cool. So we are going to be getting uh, my friend Ian, um, who hasn't got a Facebook page other than his personal page, to um, to do, do us a Sabine. Uh, I haven't asked him yet, but I will ask him if I can post up a couple of examples of his artwork so you can kind of see the sort of style that we're going to get done. He did a really cool um, Boba Fett versus a Predator sort of like thing recently. He just like streamed himself doing it. It was really, really interesting to watch. So we're going to get him on that to get ourselves another alt art, which I'm sure we will, if you see us in person, we'll distribute. And if not, I'm sure we'll work out some way in which you can get it. Just pay us the, um, a small fee for postage and printing. cover its printing cost, and yeah. you can get one. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you much for the continuing support. It, like I say, it really means a lot to us. Uh, we still need to get it sorted out so that our show is on swdestiny.com, as for some reason it hasn't been coming up there. But we, you can see our archive on there. Yeah. If not, yeah. yeah. Thanks very much for, for listening, and we'll see you guys next time. And remember, goodbye. <laughs>